All right, so as we saw, the light reactions take energy from light and use that energy to drive this reaction, turning a bunch of ADP molecules into ATP molecules, which are energy carriers, and taking a bunch of NADP molecules and reducing them, um, turning them into NADPH molecules, which are also energy carriers. So what we're going to talk about now is um, how the carbon reactions um, take that NADPH and ATP and get the energy out of them. So it regenerates ADP and NADP and uses that energy to drive this reaction, taking a bunch of carbon dioxides from the air and joining them, joining the carbons together to make carbohydrates. Um, I'm going to say glucose. I mean, really the way I'm going to talk about it is it's not that they make glucose. They make the precursor to glucose called glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, or G3P. Um, and it's, it's, it's basically almost all of the work of making glucose. So basically, when you make G3P, you're basically there. Um, and the set of reactions that does this business, that um, since his name comes second, you know, the benson gets dropped. Um, and it all starts with an enzyme called Rubisco. Now Rubisco stands for ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase. So what Rubisco does, you can tell from the name, is that it takes some compound called ribulose bisphosphate, which is a five carbon sugar, and it carboxylates it. It adds a uh, carbon to it. Now it can also oxygenate it. It can also add an oxygen to it. We'll talk about that reaction later. But the normal Calvin cycle we're going to start with three molecules of ribulose bisphosphate. Nobody really calls it ribulose bisphosphate. They call it um, RUBP. And RUBP has five carbons. So uh, if, you're if you're going to do the carbon bookkeeping, which I encourage you to do, so far we have 15 carbons total. And what Rubisco does is it's going to take three carbon dioxides. So three carbon dioxides. And of course, carbon dioxide has one carbon. And we're going to add those carbon dioxides onto those ruby piece. So Rubisco attaches these carbons onto each of these ruby piece. So we end up with three molecules of something that has six carbons. This molecule that has six carbons, it actually is completely unstable, and it breaks down basically immediately into two things that have three carbons. So we end up with six molecules of something with three carbons. It's called 3-phosphoglycerate, or 3-PG. This 3-PG is then converted into six molecules of another three-carbon compound um, in a reaction that uses an ATP, so actually six ATPs, producing six ADPs. Uh, if you're interested, it's called 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. But then these molecules are converted in another reaction into um, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, G3P. And this reaction actually um, uses the six NADPHs. giving us back six NADPs. Now, these six G3Ps, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, that's what we want. You know, that's the, that's the precursor to making glucose and all sorts of other organic compounds. Um, and so once we've made the G3P, we've actually done most of the work of making glucose. What's going to happen now is that one of these G3Ps, so one G3P, it's going to go on to the synthetic pathways where glucose and the other compounds are made. Five of them, the other five, are going to go on and um, go through a series of other reactions. And along the way, um, three ATPs are going to be consumed, making three ADPs. But along the way, uh, but ultimately, um, 
the function of these reactions is to take these five glyceraldehyde three phosphates and from them produce three molecules of ruby P. And here's where that carbon bookkeeping comes in handy because five, you know, five three carbon compounds, that's 15 carbons, and here we have uh, three five carbon compounds. So this set of reactions is going to rearrange those carbons and regenerate ruby P so that we can uh, do another cycling of the Calvin cycle. That's why it's a cycle. It's kind of complicated. So here's how to break it down into parts. Um, this first part, where a carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, so since it's not attached to an, organic, to an organic compound, we think of this as inorganic carbon. When we attach it to something organic, that's called fixation. So this process here, we can call the fixation stage. Fixation. Then this part, producing the glyceraldehyde three phosphate, we're going to call that the reduction stage. Because what's going on here is that we're taking carbons and we are, um, in, in each of these reactions, we're, we're taking, because it's in these reactions that we actually form those high energy carbon-carbon bonds. Um, and it's called reduction because uh, when you form those carbon-carbon bonds, it's a form of reduction. It's a form of um, adding electrons to those carbons. Um, and this last stage, this set of reactions that I didn't even really elaborate, we're going to call that regeneration. Because the function of these reactions is to regenerate ruby P so that the Calvin cycle can, uh, can go around again. So in the Calvin cycle, we're going to start with ribulose bisphosphate. Um, nobody actually calls it that. Uh, I'm going to call it ruby P. That's, what, that's how most people write ribulose bisphosphate. And uh, we're going to start with three molecules of ruby P. Now, ruby P has five carbons. What Rubisco does is it's going to take three molecules of carbon dioxide, which of course has one carbon, and it's going to join those carbon dioxides to the ruby P's to form three molecules of a six carbon compound that's actually really unstable. The, the six carbon compound immediately breaks into two three carbon compounds each, so we're going to end up with six molecules of uh, something that has three carbons. That something is called uh, three phosphoglycerate, three PG. Okay. The three PG is going to be converted into uh, six molecules of a different three carbon compound called uh, one three bisphosphoglycerate. Um, but this step requires some ATPs. It requires six ATPs converting them into six ADPs. These three carbon compounds are then converted into um, another three carbon compound called glyceraldehyde three phosphate. Six, six of these things. So six glyceraldehyde three phosphates. And this step requires NADPHs. Six NADPHs. Converting them into six NADPs. Now this Six, this G3P, this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, um, this is the precursor to glucose um, that I was talking about. When you've made these, you've done all of the difficult energetic work of making glucose. So one of these is going to go on to, uh, to the synthetic processes that make glucose and other organic compounds that need to have a lot of energy in them. So out of these six, one goes this way to the synthetic pathways. So synthetic, synthetic pathways. The other five G3Ps are going to go on to a set of reactions that I'm not going to elaborate at all. Um, and their function is to regenerate ribulose bisphosphate. And actually, these reactions also do consume some ATP, three ATPs. So 
So, so that completes the cycle. This Ruby, these Ruby Ps are then available to, um, to take on more carbon. And if you're doing the carbon bookkeeping, which I always encourage you to do, you'll see that here we have five three carbon compounds. So that's 15 carbons. And here we have three five carbon compounds. So we still have 15 carbons. So, so, um, so no carbons were created or lost in that process. And in fact, in the entire cycle, in the entire cycle, we see three carbon dioxides entering, so three carbons entering, and we have three carbons exiting through the synthetic pathway. So there again, the carbon bookkeeping works out. Now the Calvin cycle is, you know, it's 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 kind of intimidating. It's very complicated, and one way to understand it is to break it down. So here's how we can break this down into phases. This step here, where we're making uh, we're, we're taking carbon from the atmosphere and bringing it into the cycle. We're going to call that fixation. Because the carbons, when they're still in the atmosphere, are considered to be inorganic carbon. They're not attached to an actual organic compound. So, so taking an inorganic compound and bringing it into an organic system, in general, that's called a fixation. So this is the fixation phase of the Calvin cycle. This next stage here, when we're taking that uh, that recently created organic compound and turning it into this energy rich sugar. This is the reduction phase. And it's called reduction to sort of reflect the fact that um, it's the reducing power of this highly energetic NADPH that's really driving the formation of high energy carbon carbon bonds in the G3P. This last stage um, where we're regenerating the Ruby P, it's called the regeneration phase. So it's a complicated cycle, but it has three parts, three sort of phases. And uh, you should understand the phases before you try to understand the reactions in greater detail.